Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about software engineers. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, as a software engineering manager, how would you define your ideal software engineer? Well, I uh, I would. Th this is a good question. So. When I, for me, the idea of software engineer is an individual which has two parts, and those are the, like really. These are going to be very fluffy, but I'm going to break it down as well because I really dislike being too fluffy about things. I like to be specific because that's usually more helpful. But the fluffy definition is that an ideal software engineer, for me, uh, from my perspective as the manager, is number one, someone who unburdens me from having to do. Uh, do a lot of things because I'm very usually very busy with other things that I need to do because that's part of my role so I can't do a lot of hand holding when even when I want to so that's number one someone who unburdens me number two is someone who has the ability to raise the overall quality and of the work environment at, at the company these are the two main things uh, at a very fluffy level. So let's talk about that. First and foremost, someone else who unburdens me. So there are different types of software developers. The software developers who are usually the best to have in your team, if at least from the manager perspective, is the sort of people who they they work well within the group, like they have social skills and so forth, so they fit in, but they also have a certain amount of mentoring and leadership skills, and they are, like, they have te very strong technical skills where they learn the domain. They learn how things work within the company, they figure out how different systems work, and they can help other developers with their questions, so that you don't have to all the time. Because the problem with being a manager is that any type of manager, it doesn't matter how high you go, is that you never have time for anything because you're always, you, you're a connection, but you become like a communication hub. That is the essence of being a manager. You, you, you're you always talking to someone else or you're always in a meeting, aligning with other people because the higher up you go, the more meetings you face. And it's inevitable. And it just grows and grows the higher up you go. And even at like a team lead level or like an engineer manager, like you have tons and tons and tons of these people where you have to talk to them in schedule appointments and so forth. So even when you want to, and these sort of, like, because that's that's the, un the it's sort of like bugs in a sense, you can't plan to be available. Because sometimes your software developers, they have an issue or they have a problem which just happened this moment and they need help immediately and you can't help them you want to help them but you can't because you right now you're in that really really important architects meeting or that really really important alignment meeting with another department or something like that and so having a software developer in your team who kind of goes who just feels uh, uh, feels the need to go and uh, who feels committed enough to their work to just go and help their coworker is a godsend even if that person might not know exactly how to solve it, just having them say, hey, I'm not the expert here or anything, but I could try to help you. And then they start working together and maybe they together solve the problem. Even if you know exactly how to solve the problem, you might, as I said, you might just not have the time to go there and help that person, but it's not important. The important part is that that person that asks for help doesn't feel isolated, doesn't feel alone, doesn't feel like, yeah, I don't have anyone to talk to and the company doesn't care about me. The important part is that this, uh, there is someone there for them, that they feel that they can rely on their work environment to unblock them or so forth and so forth. And ideally, of course, you want to be that person but sometimes it's it's a godsend that somebody else can do it. In a sense, it's similar to how a parent who has small children you just you know they love their you love your kids, but uh, sometimes it's really nice to just have a nanny or like someone or like a grandmother or something like that or gra grand or, you know it doesn't matter any grandparents right who can just unload the kids uh, unload your you can unload the kids a few hours uh, on and so you can do some other thing that you can't really do when you have the kids around all the time because you have to keep your focus on them 
and it's exactly the same thing for you as an engineering manager to have that uh, software developer who you know like that person like that is always going to like just pop into like um, uh, the situation and just go yeah I have some thoughts on how you can solve this to be helpful and try to support their coworkers and ideally of course you mean if it's a junior developer sometimes they don't know but they're still gonna give like show that they're willing to help uh, and ideally of course it should be like a master little programmer who has an answer to all the questions right but it doesn't have to be it just has to be someone who makes you feel like yeah I don't have to worry, they're gonna solve it, they're gonna figure it out. That is a godsend. Holy shit, that is a godsend. It's also a little bit dangerous because if you rely too much on people like that, you start to figure out that, oh shit, that person actually knows all the things and I know nothing now. And that's when you realize that you are a manager now. You're not an engineer anything, you're a manager. You're like you you are like an old football player. You just have to accept now, dude, that you're not a football star anymore. You're a middle-aged fat guy sitting on a bench talking to friends about how you used to play football. Anywho, the other part, uh, which is uh, very important as well, is to uh, to have someone who raises the quality of the work environment, which is sort of we're touching on that with uh, with what I'm talking about. But it's not just about that. It is also about having a software developer who actually engages other people in the work. Because the thing is, guys, it is it's hard to find a software developer that knows what they're doing and can produce results. But it's even harder to find people who care about their own work. I can you can find smart people for a lot of money as well that you can hire like consultants and so forth that I mean these are smart people uh, some people are not so good but a lot of them are so it's not impossible to find software developers but it's nigh on impossible to find software developers who really really care about the craft and they have creative solutions they will come with suggestions they will come with ideas um, and the, they will actually help you build up the company in some fashion. They can take responsibility for, uh, you know, educating other people, or they can help out with um, uh, planning things. So you might sometimes you might have a problem that you need a creative uh, person to come up with a solution because you can't just write out a store specification, or you can't just tell people yes, make this thing and then hope that it works. If you have ever been an engineering manager and you had like a business need where oh we need to build this solution that does this thing at a very high level well guys high level planning is actually very difficult to delegate because the problem with delegating something that isn't very specific is that it is there's a lot of room for interpretation which means that the person who's getting the responsibility of actually implementing it then guys incidentally guys this is why a lot of IT companies fail because if you have this vision of what you want to be made but you lack the ability to express that in a very detailed manner a lot of engineers or as I said they're code monkeys they don't know how to actually make this happen and this isn't incidentally why some people think that they need uh, architects they can't actually break the problem down to the point where it's actually very tangible and like how how do we actually do this thing so if you have an engineer who really understands how to solve problems who really understands how to get people aligned on this is the vision all right they want this problem to be solved here is how we solve it concretely here's how we solve it and then can actually make everybody else understand to get there oh okay this is what we need to do as a team in order to deliver on this end goal and help you actually map out the roadmap and all of this stuff in a very easy to digest manner and raise the uh, uh, to, to, to take other people other developers from code monkeys to people who actually are committed and understand the vision of what you're trying to build because it's real that's the big limitation with top-down management uh, there are different perspectives on up-down and top-down but the top-down what, what one of the limitations is that you can tell a person what you want but if it that doesn't mean that they will make the thing that you want which is an enormously difficult thing and so having a software developer who really gets how the company needs to work or like really understands what's important to focus on and what to get right and like can concretely take that big idea and make it into uh, digestible pieces of work is a godsend.
that is the gem of the company. So what I want you to take away from this is that for me uh, personally I would say that uh, the ideal software engineer from a management perspective is usually a person number one who has the ability to unburden you as a manager like a person who can actually take up work you can know, you know that if there's something unforeseen that happens or some situation arises they were uh, that person is going to help their coworkers or they're going to make it just uh, be a non issue because as a manager it's really tricky I mean even if you know exactly if uh, most guys by the by most engineering managers don't actually know how to solve coding problems. They had left that behind a long time ago. As tech lead, for example, you might know exactly how to solve it, but most engineering managers know fuck all about software development in terms of like coding. So you really need to have uh, other developers in your organization who just kind of goes, yeah, I know how to solve this, and then they jump in. You don't have to direct them, you don't have to tell them to go and fix the problem. They're actually just going to do it, and you have this good rapport with them where they feel comfortable that is a godsend because it unblocks you it gives you the very needed time to sit in all those good good old meetings that you have right and the other part is that you need someone who raises the overall quality of your work environment because you can give so you can tell someone in words about your vision but there's a world of difference between telling somebody what your vision is and having someone truly understand these detailed steps to make it happen because if you tell someone and they don't know how to make it happen, it's all for nothing. You're going to produce the wrong thing. And having an engineer who really knows how to you know, really understand the vision and actually break it down to so that other code monkey types uh, understand how they're going to do this thing and actually do the detailed planning, that is these people. These are the people we need. Have a great day.